thirsty. <laughs> Hi everyone, my name is Leah, also known as Miss underscore LJV on Instagram and eventual on Ravelry. Thank you for taking some time out of your day to spend time with me. Um, welcome if you're new, I'm happy to have you here and thank you for coming back if you are returning. Um, I have to say it's been very nice to be podcasting again on a regular basis. Um, it's pretty late at night. I just realized that I have my fan blasting in my room um, because we sleep with, uh, we have a box fan in Quinn's room that my, my son, my five month old's room, um, really loud, it drowns out all of the noise upstairs. And then we also have a fan in our room, both to, again, add another layer because they're right across the hall, from, our bedroom's right across the hall from each other. Yeah, it's another layer of sound so he can't hear us at all like it's so nice to be able to like talk um and not have to whisper <laughs> all the time and also we just got really used to the white noise so i'm gonna go turn that off for now i also just got done exercising i have officially started strength training again um, i finally feel safe in my body after my c-section to be able to do that and I'm getting married next year at the end of May and so I want to feel my best for my wedding so I also just showered so that's why I look the way that I look. What am I wearing? This is a throwback to 2021. This is called the Hachi sweater. It's by Yuki Kaneko. Um, I'm not gonna stand up because I'm kind of in my pajamas and also uh, in my comment on the project it's a one size pro uh, pattern so it's not size inclusive whatsoever which is not super surprising um, but anyway I love the neckline I love the um, pattern the cables there's two cables that go all the way down to a split hem and I'll put a picture um, for so you can see what it looks like but I do remember I added a full cable repeat and it still is too short uh I don't have the kind of body type for a boxy sweater I like mine much longer so I actually kind of want to make this again but longer I also was disappointed I love this yarn this yarn is um Cascade Yarns Cantata I think I might have gotten it on sale it's like a not a blown yarn Maybe it's a blown yarn, but it's sort of like um, a chainette with mohair. Am I describing that right? Anyway, it's like a really interesting, unique yarn, but it kind of feels to me a little greasy, a little st a stiffer than I want. Um, I think this would be great in a Barocco, and I think I actually said that in the comment. Yes. I, I, I think that the actual sweater has long sleeves and I just made mine a short sleeve. I think I was over it by that time and I probably at the time already knew that it was too short, but it was too late by that time. So um, anyway, I do like the color. It's not coming in, as, it's coming in cooler, I feel like on camera than it is in real life. It's a little bit warmer in in person, but I, yeah, I just wanted to wear a nice knit that I hadn't worn in a long time. So this is the Hachi sweater. Um, I don't have anything finished, which makes sense because I am working on just a couple things. Um, let's start with my car project. So last time I showed you my first sock from uh, a vanilla sock from Knit Circus in um, one of their gradient stripings. Um, it was a mist dye, so I don't think this is what it's actually supposed to look like. I'm not sure what's wrong with it, but um, I like these colors. So um, you can more clearly see on this side where I did pick up and not twist my stitches. So there's more like holes kind of. See, you can see here and here and here and here. And then, but on the other side, I did twist and so you I mean the camera I think is actually even showing that it's more it looks more gappy than it looks in real life but yeah so this is my finished one my unfinished one I'm actually pretty far I knit the cuff 
I started the heel flap because I was just guessing because I didn't have the finished one with me um, how many how far down I needed to go and then I realized I had a couple more stripes when I actually compared the two of them and I actually I think knit, either I knit this one's ankle a little bit tighter gauge or I tried on the other one enough that it already is stretched out a little bit because it seems a little bit narrower so I ended up actually I think knitting a little too far but it's not a big deal and then I did a slip stitch uh, guess, uh, heel flap and I did a V heel turn. I always just Google like uh, 56 stitches heel turn and then choose the V flap and then it like use a calculator to be like, oh yeah, it's, it's slip one, knit 13, slip slip, knit, slip slip, knit one and then turn and then purl, you know, whatever. So I always forget the number. I, I always think like it's 13, right? But I have a, I think a pretty narrow, it's so weird because I feel like my heel in life is not like super narrow, but in terms of like sock fit, I feel like narrow is the most comfortable. Like I want it to be tight on my foot. So anyway, I just finished the um, gusset here. On both sides and now I just have several inches of foot to knit before I get to the toe so that's nice look at all this yellow that I got to have that I did not have on my other sock because I'm knitting them the inverse and my feet are too small to use all of the yarn unfortunately <laughs> but yeah these are my socks I do love working on socks I did just order not just but like within the last couple weeks just order a sock set called like gingerbread house or gingerbread socks it looks so cute i am a huge sucker for particularly halloween and christmas colors or holiday colors they're just so fun and i love wearing holiday socks around christmas so and halloween so i'm very excited to get that but that won't ship for a while but i believe I want to say through the end of the month, Knit Circus is selling the gingerbread socks. Uh, if they are, I'll put the link in the show notes and you have like a day. Oh, here's Grim. That was mean of me to leave with him around, but he was like, whoa. He's been very sneezy today, but I feel like a lot of that is because I was wearing my turtle dove earlier and he was licking it and then inhaling the fibers, so... Whose fault is that? <laughs> but yes, I have two cats. One is black, his name is Grim, and I have another cat who is orange, and his name is Habanero, but we call him Nero. Um, they are brothers from the same litter, and they are 16 and a half. Almost. Next month will be their six month birthday, their half birthday. Um, so yeah, that's the, that's my car knitting. So I gotta make sure to put that back in the car. I like to knit on the way to, um, well, it tends to be the mall is the, lo the longest place we go. And Steve has to drive. He has to, I, I was like, unless, until we get a new car, he has to drive unless he's sitting in the back because Quinn's car seat, um, requires that the front seat be pushed pretty far forward. And I'm much shorter than Steve, so I can tolerate that, but Steve cannot fit in the front seat. He drives a, uh, well, his car is a hatchback and I have a car, but I haven't driven it in over a year and we just need to get rid of it. Um, we used to have one of the, um, easy click car seats so we could like take the car seat in and out, but Quinn hated, hated the carrier. So we never ever took it out of the car because what was the point? He would be screaming his head off. Might as well just carry him. So... Um, eventually we did have a second car seat so I don't I had asked for two different ones the easy click and then um, the like lifetime like starts with baby but can expand to be a booster for until they need until they stop needing a, a seat at you know four foot nine or whatever it is that they have to be three foot I can't remember um, is it three foot nine maybe not four foot nine <laughs> that's like almost as tall as me <laughs> 
Um, but yeah, we put that in and uh, it takes up a little bit less space. So the, the cl easy click one meant that my knees were literally pressed up against the dash. Anyway, I, <laughs> I digress. Um, okay, what else? Oh, I have, I think, since the last episode, and I can't remember for sure, so sorry if I'm re-showing, but I think I got another, maybe not. Yeah, I think I got an, I think I got another row on my, on my blanket. So this would have been September 1st. So it actually goes this way. September 1st, 2nd, 3rd, 4th, 5th. It was really hot, really hot over Labor Day. So we have that, but I do have all of the circles uh, crocheted up and um, the ends woven in for up through, I think, September 23rd-ish. So basically the whole month of September is crocheted up. It was a pretty warm month, 60s and above average. And then I also crocheted an X, I crocheted the October 1st or October delineation. And then I just have a random one off from one of the earlier colors that I must have misplaced or maybe accidentally made the wrong color and ended up not using it. So, oh, and I guess I already have another one for November then. I didn't realize I had that. So yeah, so this is what I do. I make the little circles so how I, how I do it is I make a magic circle using Tony Lipsy's method for making a magic circle. And then I chain two and then do two double crochets, chain one, two double crochet, uh, three double crochets, chain one, three double crochets, chain one, three double crochets. And then I slip stitch into the first chain or the first, the set of two chains. And then I weave in the back and then I take the front and put it back and then sort of I weave in a ton like I just go back and forth and back and forth and back and forth and around to make I don't I don't like when it, there's a hole <laughs> um, I think in some crochet granny square patterns especially if you're doing something really unique or like a puff stitch or something like that it can look super cool to have the hole in the center but for this blanket I really, really want them closed. So they look like little flowers. So I make sure to do that. But I just need to set aside the time to do a row here and there. Oh, I think I need to buy more of the gray yarn in the background to the main color. Um, I think I'm out. Well, I'll have to check. That might be a thing that I, yeah, I have this much yarn left. That will not last me a full row. So yeah, that, and that is just a basic, so I just have the circle and then I do a continuous join as you go. Although I'm definitely not doing it perfectly correct because I end every row. So the way that I start it is you start at the last date or the furthest date and then you attach, just do the top of each one all the way across until you have a row of circles attached and then when you get to the end, then you go um, down and around it up, down, around, up, down, around, up, down, around, up, all the way across. So then it means that at the end, you go down, around, up, but again, you need to start down here. And so there's something I'm missing. And because of the way I started it and the way that I keep doing it, I feel like I can't just like find a tutorial anymore because I, I obviously did something wrong. So I just uh, slip stitch all the way down and then that, then I'm at the beginning because I think I'm gonna add a border anyway at the end. So whatever, um, it's not a big deal. But if you know an easy fix or, or like how to end where I can somehow end down here, cat hair, grin, <laughs> he's down the hall. Um, let me know because <laughs> otherwise I just slip stitch back down because you go down around up to end it and then 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 you're up here and that does not help anyone but I am making progress I am over 50% done I'm like 
I'm, I'm getting far on this. Look at that. I'm so proud of me for keeping up with it. And again, I'm so excited for Quinn to have it. So this is a, a temperature blanket that is for the first, or for, yeah, the first year of life for my son starting on January 1st. So like the, the year of his birth, I guess I should say, not starting like on the day he was born. And it's temperature averages and in, it's like good and bad. The reason why I didn't do like highs and lows, um, for two reasons. One, I was worried that I wouldn't finish something that required so many ends. So I think a lot of people who do temperature blankets, crochet might, let's say, do the center with the low and the outside with the high. Um, and that is, that would mean two different yarns, probably because they would, they're they um, in sets of 10, right? Like the, the zeros, 10s, 20s, 30s, 40s, 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s, etc. for uh, Fahrenheit. And that's double the ends to weave in and you can't really do continuous join as you go because it could be different outside colors all the time. So that's one part of it. Another part of it is because temperatures can be so vastly different in Minnesota that you need like 20 colors. And I feel like I have plenty right now. Um, I think I go as far as negative 20 for the coldest, negative uh, 20 Fahrenheit, because average, it probably won't average below that. Um, we do get some really, really cold days, typically at the end of January or sometime in February, um, that could hit like negative 30s, negative 40s, but again, probably not the average if you take the high and the low for that day. Um, and same thing in the inverse, like, you know, we have days over 100 degrees Fahrenheit, but average, they haven't hit above 85 once you take the high and the low. So it's worked out so nicely. I love the way the colors are turning out. Um, I am excited to see it go back down to the cooler um, temperatures in the fall. And finally, in terms of what I'm actively working on, I have made great progress on my um, Boneyard Sweethearts uh, sweater test that I'm doing for Stephanie Lotvin of Pelly Bean Knits. So, here is the finished yoke and the finished body and <laughs> One sleeve almost finished. I just need to do the ribbing. Ah, oh, this color work on the forearm. So cute. Sorry if you can hear Grim eating. Uh, so, so cute. Oh my gosh. So this is for my, uh, my friend Sean. Um, they fit in this size. I do not. And I'm doing this test knit for Stephanie. I think that everything is pretty well tested at this point. And we only actually needed to knit three inches of the body and do one sleeve for the test because, but the second sleeve would be the same instructions as the first sleeve. And then the body, like it's so rare to have an error in at the end of the body when it's talking about like ribbing and the bind off. But the pattern um, has you only knit pretty short. I feel like the body, I'm trying to remember what, what she what she wanted you to do for the body. But I knit several inches longer for the body and for the underarm. So I think um, she said that the sleeve length is 15 and a half for all sizes. And that's pretty short. I believe Sean's uh, from here to here is like 19 and a half. So anyway, I, it said to knit till like 9.75 before starting the chart and I knit till like at least 11. So um, I know it's gonna grow a little bit, but I think it's better to err on the side of larger versus smaller anyway, or longer versus shorter, because you can always like, you know, bunch it up or whatever. And since I don't have my, the person that, the recipient nearby, um, I have to sort of, uh, I guess, but not, not guess, but just like, I can't try it on them. So here is, I, it's just, it's so beautiful. And the coolest thing is that 
the yarn that the skeletons and, and ghosts are in this white yarn is a glow in the dark yarn. So I cannot wait till it's finished and I will get pictures of a glowing in the dark. And then I will also be knitting myself one and we will have matching sweaters, uh, different colors, but matching sweaters nonetheless. And I am so hype. Last time I mentioned that I messed up and had one of the skulls accidentally a little bit off. I'm like, oh, because I have it this way. Um, so I did go ahead and fix that error. And now let's see if I can find which one I messed up. So it bodes well when the one you messed up, it's hard to find out which one you messed up. I truly can't, I can't find it. I mean, great. So anyway, <laughs> on one of these skulls, I duplicate stitched to fix my error. So one of them had an, an extra stitch he, like here underneath the eye and then the um, like cheekbones were shifted by one stitch. So I just took a little bit of the white yarn and I went over, I followed the V of one of the stitches and then because it was shifted, I also had to take a little bit of the, this is actually a teal and I went over the, the stitch by the cheek. Um, I think I'd be able to find that, that second one easier because over white was a, is a little bit more challenging. That's so, that's so funny. I can't find it. It's so funny. I am really good at duplicate stitch. Uh, when, before I graduated out of making just like scarves and just like arm warmers in the round and stuff. Oh, now we have narrow here. I made scarves in a tube and I would duplicate stitch images on top of them to usually something geeky. So like Final Fantasy, um, anything pixels, I guess I should say. Um, I, I have, I used to sell some on Etsy and I have one that never sold and it is a very, very cute halo one. So it has like Master Chief and um, the sword and one of the enemies and, uh, one other thing I can't remember, but anyway, it's adorable. I'm just, I was over there. I'm just looking at it. And so I just got really good at duplicate stitching because that was like the thing that I did, the like advanced part of knitting that I, I would do when I was too scared to try to do sweaters or socks or anything like that. Um, I'm, I guess hats I had done a little bit, but anyway, duplicate stitching. So it's not, it's actually really good practice to sort of learn more about knitting. When people talk, people who are advanced knitters talk about uh, reading knitting, duplicate stitch really helps you learn how to read knitting because you have to be able to follow the stitches in order to do it well. And it is, it is a pretty good skill. Um, I don't think I can put my I was going to see if I could tilt the camera up to show you. I did a, a wall hanging for Steve for our anniversary, our very first anniversary in 2010. And I knit, I used a worsted weight yarn. So this is so funny because I just, I didn't have nearly the knowledge of yarn that I, and, and needles and all that kind of stuff that I do now. But I had, had a worsted weight yarn with pretty big needles. I don't, let's see if I have it in my project pages. I actually have no idea if I do. So I might have said what size needles I used if I have it. Oh, I do, okay, I do have the thing. Oh, <laughs> oh, the the main so here's my halo scarf. <laughs> so cute. Okay, Mugo we'll hanging. Let's see if I see say what needle size. A nine. So I used a worsted weight yarn and size nine needles. So that's part of the problem. But you can see how gappy it is, which again, partly might be due to the needle size. But I, so I, I knit this whole blue gigantic square. This is a really big 
piece really big um the the things behind it are pieces of magazine so i mean that's what one two at least three pages three by three pages ish of a magazine three by two and a half um and then i duplicate stitched this moogle on there using a cross stitch chart i believe and just look how cute this is <laughs> so cute oh past leah and but yeah so you could so you, but you can tell the uneven you can see so much of the blue behind it because i was less skilled at duplicate stitch at that time but now i'm pretty good at it uh so that's i mean pretty much it for that's it for all the knitting i need to finish my test knit I don't need to finish the sock or anything like that, but I will keep working on the temperature blanket, and it's like, am I going to start a new project? I feel like no, because I want to make myself a Boneyard Sweethearts sweater in my size before Halloween. So that's probably what I'm going to do once I finish Sean's. And that's probably all I'm going to be, uh, I'll probably be pretty monogamous because I'll, I'll want to get that done and it'll take me longer to do mine than for, to do theirs. So, yeah, so maybe, maybe it'll be two weeks between episodes because I want, it'll be kind of boring. I don't have a lot to show you, but the last thing I wanted to talk about is uh, Tony Lipsy of TL Yarn Crafts recently released a yarn line with Hobie. Um, Hobie is, uh, I don't want to call it a big box store, but it is, it's like an, it's an affordable, affordable yarn, uh, retailer similar to like a Lion brand or a Knit Picks, uh, like that. So, uh, Hobie is actually where I, I ordered, um, a decent amount of my like faux mohair when I was wanting to do more affordable yarn. I don't know where it is. Oh. Yeah. So like this, like their Diablo yarn is 30% mohair, 30% nylon, 40% acrylic. And it's way more affordable than buying like a pure mohair or Surrey. So I ordered a ton of that at one point in the past. So they're really good to check out. But anyway, um, Tony just released a yarn line um, that is 50% cotton and 50% wool, and it is really soft, and I ordered a bunch of it on release because there was a 30% discount. I think they're still having discounts of, like, 20%, you know, it, constant, constant, um, releases, but I just picked a random amount of random colors that I really liked, so, um, I just wanted to show you what I, what I ordered. So they had, there's two lines, one is solids and one is melange, um, so one of the solids I got was this cream. Do they have names? I believe they, dang, I know they have, I feel like they have real names, but this is one. <laughs> so I got several balls of this cause you can't go wrong with, um, with a solid cream. Then I got some of color nine which is also one of the solids. I feel like it's a little more coral, a little less orange in real life, but I feel like the pictures made it look much more like red leaning. And so it's more orange than I anticipated, but it is a complex color. When I'm looking at it, it's like, is it red? Is it orange? Is it red and orange twisted together? So anyway, I've got some more of this. And then I think the other three colors I got are all melange. Let's see. Oh no, this is this said this says it's a solid. So this is color twenty five. It's like a teal, but again green. Like I don't know if you can tell. The fibers maybe you can kind of the fibers. It does look like all of them have like two different fibers. I mean, I guess it's 50-50, right? So one is lighter than the other. One is more green. One is a little bit more sea foam. It's a really nice color. 
And then this is another solid. And this is color 21. And it's like a sky blue. Or denim. Yeah, it's like a denim. And then the last one I got is actually melange. And it is like a uh, eggplant color. And it is color 19. Yeah, it's pretty, it's pretty like aubergine, right? Like pretty like maroony, purpley plum. So each ball comes with 273 yards and it says it's a three, a light, a three, a light three. So what, like a decay kind of? So yeah, I got a bunch. Hopefully I didn't just dox myself. I probably did. <laughs> but yeah, I got a bunch of just random amounts of random colors and be like, I don't know, I can maybe stripe them and make um, light tops and stuff like that. I haven't, it's been hard for me to find cottons that I like. So that's why I was really excited to get Tony's yarn. So I bought a bunch of it, hoping that I could stock up and make a few things with it. I, the, the DIY in this, is is a cotton and it's a it's a line brand and it I hate it I don't like knitting with cotton it it dries out my fingers it is stiff it that was my fridge making ice if you can hear that uh, it does not feel good on my fingers it feel again it feels kind of greasy I don't know how to describe it it's like greasy and dry at the same time I hate it but I am really excited for it to be glow in the dark, so I tolerate it. But this is very soft, so I'm curious as how to how it will feel to knit knit or crochet up. And Tony, of course, specifically talks about how yarn crochets up, how that is to crochet. She didn't mention it being like a Z twist versus S twist. So I'm curious about that. I do have a one skein that's the whatever whatever twist direction is good for crochet, but I haven't made anything with it yet. But I'm definitely saving it to crochet with to see if it feels different than, um, than with regular yarns. Um, I think that's that's all for my my crafting. All for crafting. This week. It's already almost over. Tomorrow's Friday. We are planning on, so right now my kid is in daycare three days a week, so I have him on Mondays and Fridays, but after the 9th, which is a Monday of October, I am going back to work full time, and so we'll see how that works with him being in daycare only three days a week. Um, my boss is very accommodating and said that we can always work out a schedule. Like Steve and I work at the same place and are on the same team even though we do very different jobs and so our boss works with both of us and she was saying that she'd be happy to try to help us figure out how to manage our schedules um in terms of meetings we tend to not have a bunch of meetings on mondays or fridays but it can come up and typically because we have such different schedules or different jobs our meetings actually do end up staggered so we'll probably be able to figure something out um hopefully it'll get easier for a little while like when he's able to entertain himself a little bit more like let's say he can sit up without support and can you know play quietly near play nearby or something versus now where he really needs a lot of like nearby attention he's also technically in the range where supposedly uh separation anxiety is starting to like amp up and reach its peak in the next couple weeks but i don't think that that's it i think it's just that he's frustrated that he's on the cusp of like 14 different skills but can't do any of them fully yet one thing that's been very interesting watching is the grasping how he can grasp you know like watching when you watch a child so closely and you see them all the time it's crazy how they go from like just flapping their hands around angrily to like very like inconsistently moving their arm towards something to being able to kind of get the idea of grabbing to actually being able to grab with one hand then trying to bring something to their mouth and then hitting themselves in the face then to actually being able to bring something to their mouth then realizing they have two hands and can do 
grab onto two things and now he's at the point where he can very confidently grab something with one hand and grab it with his other hand and then like have both and it's just so interesting to see this like trajectory especially when it feels like nothing is changing to step back and realize like yes it is it's just slow progress he's been alive for five months like give him a break <laughs> but also oh my god please be less fuzzy um but yeah we'll we'll, we'll see how how that works when i go back to work <sighs> what else is going on Not that much, really. Not that much has happened in a week. Um, we started doing some more wedding planning. We actually have been locking in our venue and like we, we had to pick like what time's the ceremony, what time's the reception, about how many people do you think are coming, that kind of thing. And we asked her questions like, it said the, the place we're getting married is outside, it's at an arboretum and it said like 80 for this space and you know we asked how strict or rigid that is and she said it was more about parking and than anything like if we needed more chairs that they could but just like you know have people carpool as much as they can and I basically was like we don't have 80 individuals you know I mean we do but like a lot of them are families so they would, you know two parents with kids and so they'll be coming in one vehicle so it won't be 80 different vehicles arriving and then the reception area can have 110 and so it's more about how much money do we want to spend on the space and there's a couple logistical things about like alcohol and stuff that I that we want to ask catering about but we don't get cater we don't get connected with catering until we have the contract with the um, arboretum for the main space so anyway that's fun and exciting I am um, there's two dresses that I want to try but they're online and they are like out right now it sounds like they like lend out dresses it's so funny because if you like it you can keep it so I'm not really sure but maybe it's just like they only like let out a couple at a time or however many at a time so I'm just waiting for them to come back so that I can try them on. But as I mentioned earlier, I am trying to get do more do, do more movement. So I finally started wearing my Apple Watch again. Um, it, I stopped wearing it late in my pregnancy because uh, my wrists were too swollen and it was very uncomfortable. But I have finally started wearing it again, if for nothing else other than uh, to get the points for work so we have you know an employee wellness program and you earn points and if you get a certain number of points in a year then you get you know a discount on our health insurance and our health insurance is actually quite good so it's already pretty cheap but it's like really cheap if you meet the quota and if you have an apple watch or other device uh, it's so easy to meet those points by like january they're due it due in august august 31st of every year and so I started wearing it again so I can get my points and uh, track my movements and, and whatnot. And it's so funny because typically we walk at least two miles a day, uh, especially on days like Quinn is home, like not at daycare, because we walk up to our local caribou, which is like a regional version of like Starbucks. So, and we really like caribou a lot. And so that's, almost a mile away from the house and so we walk there and back in the morning with him in the stroller usually in the, me wearing him on the way back like by the time we leave he's like over being in the stroller he's still very very iffy on being in the stroller so we'll walk up there we walk back that's at least a mile and a half and then we always walk for at least one of his his last nap of the day because his last nap of the day is like 20 minutes or so which we just need, get, need to get him to bedtime so he's not like out for six hours and that typically ends up being a wearing him walk because he just doesn't have enough like sleep drive to fall asleep on his own so um, that ends up being like a 30 minute walk and we also like to go walk around at Mall of America and I believe each 
So there's three main floors in Mall of America, if you've never been there. And the first floor has a lot more, um, I call them like outcroppings, like, you know, like it's like a circle, but then there's like, you know, entrances and exits. And um, the mall added these just like walk spaces that you could just walk, like there's nothing in it. It's just, you could just walk around. Um, and so like doing the first floor is like a little over a mile. It's like a mile 1.15 or 1.12 or something, I think. And then the second one's a little bit shorter. And then the third floor is a little bit shorter, but I believe it's about a mile. So it's like, if you do a lap on each floor, then you're getting about three miles. And when we're there for two wake windows, we can definitely get a good amount of miles just by walking around with him, with the baby. But on daycare days when we go, especially lately, we've had to feed him before we go and, and then we're only there for like 45 minutes, so it's shorter. And so I'm like, ah, my tracking is shorter, shorter than two miles. It's like a mile, a mile 25 or a mile and a half or something like that. But anyway, it's just, it's funny. Um, so that'll, that'll be fun to track my movement and see how much we really get. And as it gets colder and mostly really with snow because you, our stroller is not like all terrain so we won't be able to take him in the snow um on walks we'll definitely be spending more time at the mall like we need to get out we need to walk we need to move he needs the variety as well like he definitely gets bored of our house he gets bored of our faces he really wants to see everything so we want to give him that opportunity yeah, no, I think that's about it. So I'm going to wrap this up and I might see you next week or I might see you the week after, depending on how much I have to chat with you about. But thank you so much for hanging out with me and I look forward to seeing you again soon. Bye.